Hey guys, what's going on? It's Gunner here. Welcome back to the channel. Today it's going to be a little bit of a different type of video. I'm going to be doing slightly uh, a gear list type review video. I want to kind of give you guys an insight on what I use in the, in the field, what I like for specific situations, and why I do it, right? So today I'm going to be talking about kind of my boot setup. Now, I still haven't dialed it in 100% because I get cold feet. Like a lot of you guys, I assume, it's a huge market for keeping your feet warm and trying to find the right pair of boots for the job. Now, I've got a couple different situations that I like all of these for, and a lot of those decisions that I make are hanging in the balance of what I'm hunting, where I'm hunting, when I'm hunting, and uh, my end goal with that hunt. So, I'm gonna start out with my Kenetrex. Now, these are the boots that I took to Alaska last fall hunting Kodiak. Island for blacktail. Now the whole reason behind that is I wanted ankle sport and I wanted at the end of the day the best hiking boot mountain boot possible because at the end of the day when you're in terrain like that you know we were dealing with a lot of deadfall a lot of very thick grasses switchgrass type stuff but deadfall mixed in with that devil's club we've got rolling topography and with all of that grass laying down and all that deadfall, really easy to step in a pothole or just not be able to see the topography in the ground and how it lays underneath all that mess. So that was the, the top priority is at the end of the day, just protect my legs. And at the same time, be able to walk in these things for miles on end and long days in the field. When it comes to the temperature, the comfortability, the reasons I chose these Kenetrex is they're highly waterproof completely leather and they make a waterproof wax that you can apply to further waterproof them. So I think I put on three or four coats of that waterproof wax. You can continually apply that stuff and uh, they're gonna treat you really well. I mean, these boots are going on two years old. They show some wear, but that's just because I, I wear them a lot, you know, whether it be habitat work in the, in the winter time, on these steep bluffs, running a chainsaw, I don't wanna slip. I want to have good ankle support. I've got weak ankles and uh, I just want to be comfortable at the end of the day. They're highly waterproof. Like I said, I'll throw my gaiters on or maybe I'll throw my, my bibs on and, and cinch off that bottom just so I don't get any of that tall 10, 12 inch snow in over my, over my uh, calves there. But that is the boot of choice if I'm dealing with an out of state hunt when it comes to very mountainous or something that I'm going to be walking long distances, whether that be Montana for mule deer, South Dakota for mule deer, antelope, Nebraska for mule deer, all those western states, that's what I'm gonna be wearing. And that's what I do wear even as early as uh, late August. That's when I normally go out antelope hunting. I'm not this year, I'm trying to focus a little bit more on maybe some mule deer I haven't decided yet, or just purely focus on Wisconsin whitetails. So I'll keep you guys tuned on that. But that's my footwear of choice when it comes to more spot and stock. I've even sometimes thrown in some slippers in my pack for when we're sitting glassing just to give my feet a break. Um, just something a little bit more comfortable. Um, cool them down if it's real hot. And then at the end of the day, if uh, I do end up going in on a stock on a mule deer or something like that, having something a little bit more quiet and not so cumbersome as a big boot on my feet. But next we're gonna go over here to the lacrosses. Now, I've had these for a few years. I would say four. Um, as you can see, they're pretty faded. Now, the one thing that I like to do with rubber boots is I leave them outside. I leave them outside virtually year round, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But whenever you buy a new pair of boots, they're gonna have that real shiny uh, coat to them. And at the same time, they're gonna have that real nasty manufacturing rubber smell to them. And I'm trying to get rid of that as quickly as possible. I will not go out in the woods with a brand new pair of boots. That's just not something that I'm gonna do because the scent that those emit when they're brand new like that right out of the box, it's gonna be destructive to any type of hunting that I'm trying to do. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to limit our scent, not bring a pile in with us. Just because they're brand new doesn't mean they're better, right? So. I don't necessarily care what they look like. These are green. They're not really green anymore, as you can tell, but uh, they've held up okay. Um, all rubber boots are gonna go through you know, their, their phases. You're gonna wear them out. You're gonna have to get new ones, but these have held up decently. These are more my early season boots. 
Now, when I'm talking early season, I'm talking from the beginning of the season to probably the second week of October. By then, it's getting too cold to be wearing these. I believe these are 800 grams. So normally, like I said, I get cold feet pretty easily. So normally I'm wearing two pairs of socks when I get into those uh, second week of October wearing those. But uh, the reason I like those is they're a little bit smaller, they're lighter. So I can move around a lot better when it comes to climbing up the tree stands if I'm hanging and banging. I can use these a lot better than I can these big bulky things. I feel like when I'm climbing up the tree, I get a better grip. I can feel the, the peg a lot better than uh, having a bigger boot, like a big pack boot or something like that. Those are strictly early season, more into that second week of October. And the reason for the rubber boots is just strictly scent elimination, keeping my scent from my feet off the ground, right? Because what do bucks do when they're trailing does? They keep their nose down. If I came in on a trail that a buck's trailing doe on and he gets a whiff of my feet, he's not gonna like that. So I'm trying to eliminate all my ground scent or most of it if possible. So that's why I like those knee high boots, those knee high rubber boots, spraying them down. I'm tucking my pant legs into those boots because at the same time, if I throw them over the top, I'm dragging those pant legs on the ground too. So as little human scent as possible, like I said, these are sitting out year round. Both these sets of rubber boots are heavily faded. Even in the winter months, they're sitting out on the deck just trying to remove all the potential scent that's there. And now lastly, we're gonna go in here. This is an Irish Setter boot. I believe it's one of the ExoFlex models. They're pretty old. They may be an Alpha Burley. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, these are 1600 grams. Now, the situation that I like those are more of the rut long sits in the stand. Now with those being 1600 grams, I don't have to wear as many pairs of socks. I'm a little bit more comfortable, but at the same time you can tell they're a little bit bigger. So you can see the nose on the toe is a lot bigger and they've just got a bigger pad on, on the bottom. So it's easier when I'm trying to sneak through the woods to step on twigs, make a little bit more noise. They're heavier. So when I'm walking, I'm more likely to kind of drag my feet. So I gotta be a little bit more careful of really paying attention and not stepping on debris and being quiet and being slow when I'm walking in. But those are my boot of choice when it comes to second week of October on into the gun season. That's what I'm wearing during the gun season too. I'm normally sitting in a blind, so I'm out of the elements a little bit more. So I don't necessarily have to worry about a lot of the, the weather and the, the cold getting to my feet on those long all day sits. But at the same time, I have done long all day sits in just those boots too. So all of it's based on preparation, understanding what your gear can tolerate, what you can tolerate, what you need to be wearing at the correct time of the year so you're comfortable. Because at the end of the day, if you're not comfortable, you're not gonna be a good hunter. I'll give you an example. Last season, it was late October, I wanna say the 25th or something, and we didn't have any good weather leading up to that point. It was pretty mild, pretty warm, but we had this nasty cold snap. It ended up dropping like 20 degrees and the wind jacked up big time, 20 to 20, 25 mile an hour gusts. And uh, I was out in the stand, it was a crazy sit. Uh, it was actually when I passed baby G at like 15, 16 yards. And I was wearing my good boots and my feet weren't the concern. It was the rest of my body. I wasn't layered properly. I didn't have a good wind cutting jacket on. And at the end of the day, I had to crawl down multiple times and actually do push-ups at the base of the stand to keep myself warm and in actually hunting. Because if I wouldn't, I would have been dealing with a bunch of fidgety moving around in the stand. That's not what I want to do. But I felt like I could get away with it and I actually did just because of all the things in the woods moving at that time with the heavy wind gusts and, and things like that. But that's something I try to avoid if possible when I am out hunting, keeping my movement as, as little as possible being comfortable, having the right gear for the conditions. That's the most important thing when it comes to being successful is having the right stuff so that you can be a good hunter. If you're uncomfortable, if you're suffering, at the end of the day, you gotta be able to tolerate and deal with a little bit of that stuff. But if you're freezing and you can't think right, you can't focus, when that big buck comes, something's gonna go wrong, you can bet on that. So 
This is kind of my footwear setup. I'll probably do a few more of these when it comes to my clothing, my layering, season to season to season, when we're going from early to mid to late season. But this is my run through. This is kind of my setup when it comes to my footwear of choice. Back to the Kenetrex, those are gonna be my out of state, mainly hiking boots, spot and stock type style stuff, real mountainous, rugged terrain, things that I have to be walking pretty much all day in and uh, I'm not necessarily concerned about uh, my insulation or my scent for that matter. And then again with those lacrosses, more my early to very early mid season boots and just your typical rubber boot, keeping that scent to a minimum trying to eliminate all of that ground scent and being quiet and efficient when I'm going to and from my stand, staying low impact. And then finally with those Irish setters, just a little bit more bang for your buck. They're a little bit more clumsy, a little bit louder, but at the end of the day, they keep your feet warm when it starts to drop off into the later fall. So that's kind of my rundown when it comes to footwear when I'm out in the field hunting. If you guys uh, have any questions on any of this stuff, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. This is just what I found that works for me, what I could afford, and at the end of the day, what I like. So if you guys like this video, or you have any other ideas of some other videos you want me to make when it comes to my gear, or what I'm using in the field, drop that in the comments below. And as always, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.